Okay, YouTubesters, I got a new project. Um, a lot of people, I have welders. I don't know if you can see through the horrible clutter and mess of, of my workshop, but I have, uh, let's see, three welders, I guess, and I don't know, I got a plasma cutter and some other stuff. And uh, you need a cart when you have a welder. Well, I've got carts. Um, I've got some big carts that I got from eastwood.com. They used to sell for 100 bucks each. Now they're like 200 and I got them. No, I, I guess they were 200 and I got them for 100 each. No, wait a minute, I'm getting it all wrong. They were selling for 200 each, and they were on sale for 100 each. That's what it is. And I bought one, and it had a problem, and I complained, so they sent me another, and they didn't want the first one back. So I fixed the first one. So then I had two cards that I had paid fifty dollars each for. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to say. Honestly, sometimes I feel like Joe Biden. So uh, I've got two cards, and I've also got I don't know if you can see it, but I've got this titanium welder here on a Vulcan cart from Harbor Freight. This is a phenomenal cart. Wonderful. Uh, Ninety nine bucks before the coupon, and uh, it's just magnificent. It's heavy duty. I mean, for a Harbor Freight cart, I'm not saying it's heavy duty for you know some kind of crazy ancient Miller cart or something, but it's it's nice and sturdy. It holds over I think over 300 pounds. You can put a giant bottle on it. Easy to put together. Looks nice. Wonderful. Excellent cart. And the Eastwood carts are sturdy, but they're very cumbersome. They have two. They're, they're nice two level carts, but they're very cumbersome. They're hard to move around. And they don't have any real storage room. They've got a couple of uh, little shelf tray type things on them that are, you know, like maybe nine by four inches. And they've also got some areas where you can stick tubes of welding rod. But that's about it. Well, a lot of people these days, they're making boxes, I'm sorry, welding carts out of Harbor Freight toolboxes. You know, rolling cool, roller cabinets, that's what they call them. You can see the box right here. It says roller cabinet on it. I don't know if you can see it because I don't see anything on the back of my camera, you know, but I'm sure you can read it. So welders used to be much heavier than they are now, but they're getting lighter and smaller. And hobbyist welders are, you know, smaller typically than what people have in shops anyway. So what I'm trying to say is my welders aren't that heavy, and a lot of people, a lot of other people have welders that aren't that heavy now. So they're putting them on top of these boxes, and they're, rigging them up so the boxes have uh, shelf space for bottles, for gas tube, uh, gas cylinders. And it's really cool. Now there's a company that will sell you a kit for this, and the company is called All A Cart, and uh, the, the actual product they sell, they call it ZT Fab. They've got welding carts you can put together, and they've also got this kit where you can put a couple of sheet metal parts, bent sheet metal, I mean, I'm not plate, I should call it, not sheet metal, bent plate parts, you can attach to a, a roller cabinet. Uh, you, a shelf will stick out on one end, and there'll be a bracket to hold your bottle, and maybe a couple of cord holders and things like that, and some wheels. So uh, it, it looks really nice, but on the other hand, it's very simple, very few parts, very easy and cheap to make, I'm sure. And they charge $280 plus $30 shipping for the one that I would need. So $310. Bucks. And I think it's pretty good, but I don't think it's that good. It, it doesn't look that strong. It puts it puts a lot of uh, a lot of new torque on a couple of the on a couple of the places where the casters mount on the box. I mean, you would have to see it to see what I'm talking about. I I, I don't know. I just don't think it's I don't think it's it's as good as it, <clears throat> as it could be. So I thought to myself, why don't I just make something myself? And that's what I'm doing. So let me get out my phone so I can actually see what I'm looking at because my phone will show me stuff. Come on, come on, come on. Where is it? Um, let's see. This is one by three inch channel. And this is 11 gauge steel, which is like uh, almost an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to do it. I'm going to weld it together just the way it looks right now. I'm going to have this shelf out here for my bottle. And I'll have these things sticking under the cart, under the existing frame. Some people put a whole big frame under their cart, which seems ridiculous to me because it already has one. I mean, this cart will hold 1,000 pounds without any additional work done, being done to it. So what possible reason would you have to bolt another frame on the bottom of it? It just adds weight. A lot of people like to overbuild stuff, and they say, oh, it's beefy, it's overbuilt, uh, this will never break. And in reality, they're just spending too much money on steel, and they're proving they don't know anything about physics or engineering. Um, no manufacturer does that, unless they're preying on people that don't know anything about physics or engineering. I don't know much about engineering, but, you know, I'm not crazy. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do, and I've got another plate kind of like this one, 
and I'm going to bend it and cut an arc in it so that a bottle will fit into it, and I'm going to attach it to the side of the cart. And then I'll stick the wheels on it, the old casters. I have to get some new uh, screws because I'm going to use the old screw holes um, to hold these tubes on on one end and the whole casters on on the other. And then I'll put new holes way out at the end of the shelf, and I'll put the casters out there. So I'm going to have a total of uh, 24 bolts going through this thing instead of uh, 16. So you'll understand when I do it. I've already run into a problem. There's some kind of crud on there. What is that? Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's just crud. Anyway, I've already run into a problem. This is the bottom of the tool chest. These are the holes that I have to screw my tubing into, onto, whatever. And as you can see, they're, they're recessed. There's like, uh, I call it half an inch, a little less. This, uh, this ridge here on the front, on the back, on the side, it comes down and I want to take my tubing and put it on like this, you know, so it extends all the way across when, all, all the way across the front, all the way across the back. So the tubing, if I did that, would be resting on this metal, this little ridge. And I don't like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the metal place, and I'm going to get myself, I'm going to use aluminum. There's no point in using steel for this. Aluminum will be easier to deal with. So I'm going to get myself some half-inch aluminum flat bar plate, whatever it is, uh, half an inch, maybe a little bit more thick, and I'll make four spacers just big enough to fit over that, and I'll drill holes in them. And after that, I will be able to uh, put my tubing under it, and that way the weight will, you know, it'll, it'll bear on this area here instead of on this. So until I get that done, I guess I'll take measurements, figure out what kind of threads I've got here because I have to go buy bolts. And um, what else am I going to do? I could start drilling holes in my tubing, you know, to mate up with these. So it ought to work. I thought I'd show you what I'm trying to pull off here. Here's the uh, tube that I made. And if you look down here under this vice grip, you can see that I've got this little platform sort of a thing that I made that I'm going to weld to it. And uh, I got four of those. I made a bunch of them out of, um, well, rectangular tubing. I was going to, I, I tried to figure out a good way to cut these things out of tubing. I was originally going to use flat pieces of aluminum, but I thought, oh, I got to drive all the way up and get them. And, you know, they're not going to be attached to the tube. And it's not really the most mechanically elegant solution. And I thought, I've got this tubing here lying around the workshop. So I, I cut this tubing in half, and I, I could have used the milling machine, I could have used a plasma cutter, I could have used a propane cutter, but I decided to use my giant Metabo cutting wheel on my 7-inch angle grinder. I mean, my Metabo angle grinder with a 7-inch cutting wheel, and it goes through this stuff like butter. It's really neat. So uh, I cut this thing, and then I went over to the belt grinder and made it nice and neat and deburred it and all that, and uh, there's going to be couple of these on here more or less like that and then I'm going to drill holes in them and attach this thing and the, the cart goes up here the tool chest goes up here and the casters will go down here the um, the only thing that's annoying about this is I got to drill holes in this stuff and I've got to go through three layers of metal on every hole so what is that like 96 holes that I've got to drill that'll be irritating I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it on the milling machine because it's, that's the easiest way to locate the holes. So, because I know the center of this thing has to be the center, has to be 21 and a half inches from the center of this one. And I know that these holes for the casters have to be, you know, exactly three inches apart. So, uh, the mill will make all that a lot easier. So, this should be pretty simple. I mean, basically, I just weld these things together, drill the holes, and uh, then I've got to put the the shelf on this end to hold up the bottle and that's you know a huge percentage of this job done S slap some truck bed coating on it and I'm finished I'm also going to put some little tabs on this shelf to keep the bottle from sliding around I guess but that's about it so I'm going really well I explained this thing once before but I'm not sure I did a great job so I'm going to start over this is kind of a mock-up of the way it's going to work This, oh, I, knocked, I, hit, I kicked my homer bucket. This tube is already attached, just mocked up, make sure it fits. 
and this is the other tube. I still have to put some holes in this. These are, uh, what are these things? These are M8 uh, bolts, 60 millimeters. If you decide to do this project yourself and you want to use one inch tubing and like a half inch spacer up here, you're going to need 60 or 65 millimeter screws for this thing. I found out the difficult part about this project, the only difficult thing about it, <clears throat> is finding metric screws locally. Metric bolts, whatever you like to call them. A screw, a bolt is just a kind of screw. Anyway, uh, the day of buying things locally is, is over. <laughs> if you decide you want to do this project, make sure you go out and buy, let's see, 16 60 millimeter long M8 bolts. Because if you go to Home Depot, there's a good chance they're not going to be there, or if they are, they're going to be in the wrong place because they never sort the screws. These uh, holes, I drilled 3 8 inch holes in this thing, and locating them was, you know, not that much fun. I measured the distance between the centers of these things, the centers of the casters, and it was exactly 21 and a half inches. It's not metric. So uh, I just... I worked off of that, you know, the, the distance between the holes this way is three inches, the difference, this, the distance this way is one and three quarter inches, and uh, I just made marks with a sharp instrument, and then uh, I made punch marks for the drill, and I ended up using the drill press to do this, it turned out to be the easiest way to do it. I made three eighths inch holes, figuring that would be enough for five sixteenth screws, which is about what a, uh, an M8 bolt is. So uh, it was a little a little tight because there's a little bit of inaccuracy here and there. So I opened it up. I went up to the next size drill bit. You should probably use 7 16 I used some weird uh, intermediate step, 13 64 or something. So um, that's my suggestion for that. I'm going to put in the shelf over here. And what I, what I plan to do is I plan to put the forward casters up here. So this part here there won't be any caster. There's no need for one. These these casters will hold an infinite amount of weight, so you don't really need to have your caster here. This this tube is extremely rigid. It's not going to flop around. Um, I could just weld the casters to the end of these fork-type support things and forget about using any type of bolt or screw. I'm not sure what I'm going to end up doing. I hate the idea of welding a nice Harbor Freight caster and then you know, what if I change my mind later? I've got to grind it off. But if you weld it, you have a nice flat top on the shelf. You don't have the, uh, the, the head of a bolt sticking up. So, I don't know. I'm kind of rolling it around in my head. Just not sure. But it'll work. It's definitely going to work. This really is an easy project. You just have to find your metric fasteners in advance. That's really the hard part. So, I'm done for now. Okay, YouTube. I've done a lot of work here. I don't know if you can see what I've done. The machine, not the, not the machine, the box is obviously on its back. I've got both of my rails screwed to it. And you, as you may be able to see, I've only got two bolts on the front of this thing on, on either side. And the reason for that is the hardest part about this job is finding metric fasteners. I went to Tractor Supply, bought all they had, uh, ordered some from Home Depot. I was smart enough to order them for curbside pickup. That way they would have to go and look at, you know, at the mismatched and, and lost bolts because that's how Home Depot always is. People throw stuff around and steal it. And then they say, well, we've got 50 of these, and then you, you go over there to pick them up, and they've got none. So I said, I'll just order them for curbside pickup and let them look for them. Sure enough, they called, and they only have five, and I need, how many do I need? Uh, eight. So I don't know if it's worth it to drive over there or not. That's the hard part of this job. If, if you want to build one of these things, go ahead and order yourself a sack of 65-millimeter M8 uh, 1.25 bolts. So anyway, i got these things on here. And this is the bottom of it that the tank is going to sit on, all mocked up. And I'm using my excellent uh, metal working clamps here. These are rubber clamps, and they're fine for really quick jobs. I'll put it that way. As long as you, as long as you get the clamps off before they melt, they work great. So all I'm going to do is run some, be some uh, beads like here and here. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. And then I'm going to weld my casters here and here. And... Uh, once I'm done with that, all I have to do is find bolts. What a nightmare. It's working out really good, though. Okay, I got it all welded up. It's upside down on the welding table, and I you know, put in some little welds here and here and here and here. The weird thing is I measured, and I still got these things out of line. This one's like four inches from up here, and this one's like three inches from up here. And over here, I'm like four inches and three inches the other way. 
And do I care enough about it to grind it? Well, no, because no one's going to climb under the cart and see if the welds are in the wrong place. The welds actually look pretty good. They look like they uh, tie it in there nicely. You know, there's no, I didn't have to go back over it. There were no cold welds or anything like that. And it's reasonably pretty. And it also has welds on the outside. And uh, unlike the ones on the inside, they're symmetrical. So I'm basically done here. If I ever find some fasteners to put this, things together, this thing together, then uh, there's very little left to be done. I just got to fabricate a bracket to go on the front, and that's just one piece of metal with a couple of holes in it. So things are going beautifully. This will work, and I feel great about life. It fits. I opened up these holes pretty good, and I had to take a tap and go in and out of the uh, screw holes on the actual box because, you know, I, I welded these caps on the ends of these pipes, these tubes, and that caught all the, the, you know, the chips and stuff. I think I already said when I drilled these holes and then I had chips inside these tubes and they caught on the, the bolts when I tried to put them in and that gummed up the threads. So I had to take a tap and ream everything out and then I had to take some tiny little pliers and pull all the chips and crud out of the pipes, the tubes with, uh, well, I had, I had to yank them all out and get rid of them. So uh, if you decide to do one of these things yourself and you want to put these pretty caps on the ends of your tubes, for God's sake, put the caps on after you drill the holes. So now I'm going to weld, where is it? I'm going to weld these guys on like this, except not this, this is a swiveled wheel. I'm going to weld my, weld my uh, straight wheels, my rigid wheels on here. And after that, I should be pretty well done except for painting it. Then I'm just going to have to put a bracket up on the top to uh, immobilize the tanks, and I should be pretty well done. Well, i got to put a couple little brackets on the back to hold cords, but that's about it. Well, this booger's done. I put a weld here and a weld here. First, I tacked it on both ends. And I put similar welds on the back. And now she's, uh, she's ready to go. So now all I have to do is paint this thing. And I was trying to figure out how I could tape it and all that with these wheels in the way. I think what I'll do is just take the wheels off. And uh, then all I have to do is tape these strut type things. Those are really easy to tape. Wheels are hard to tape. So I'm going to go get me some more truck bed paint. And uh, this bottom half should be pretty well done. Except I've got to put some little tabs on it to keep the uh, tanks from scooting around, but that's nothing. I got the feet on it. I finally got enough fasteners. Well, feet, wheels. I got, uh, I got enough fasteners, and I managed to get them on there. I painted the areas around the wheel so that when I paint it again, I don't have to go through all the aggravation of masking that off. It's all bolted up. It's all ready to go. There's some crud on the front of the cabinet. That's grinding dust. I'll have to knock that off. But there's really, apart from one tiny, you know, minor, almost invisible scrapey place on it, I didn't really damage it at all. And it looks like it's going to work out really well. I was afraid this, this uh, plate here would not hold two tanks comfortably. I was afraid it would be too flimsy because all it has is a tube here under it and a tube on the other side. But I guess it'll be okay. So now I think I'm going to try to use these existing holes to uh, mount a bracket. I'm trying to decide whether I should make a bracket about this high so I can use one of my short tanks or whether I should give up on the short tanks and uh, just get another big tank. So I'll have a big tank of argon and a big tank of C25. So that's about it for now. I'll have to take this whole thing off and paint it again. I've got to weld some tabs on it and then I have to make the bracket for this part which is infinitely simpler. This is going to work. It's going to be great. Fantastic day. All right, YouTube, you're going to love this one. This is going to be the bracket that the tanks go through, the bottles on my uh, welding cart. And I need holes that are a little bit over 7 inches in diameter. I wouldn't say holes, recesses, semicircular, not really sem semicircular. Shut up, okay? More or less semicircles uh, for the bottles to go through. They have to be around a little over 7 inches in diameter. Well... I have a plasma cutter and I have a propane cutting torch, but I'm not all that great with using either one. I can do it, but I've got to have something to steady my hand and, you know, make sure I do a good cut. I, I couldn't think of anything that I had that I could use as a pattern. And then I thought about this. This is Stanislaus Saporito Super Heavy Pizza Sauce. This stuff is magnificent. If you've been trying to make your own homemade pizza and you can't get it right, uh, the two things that are probably screwing you up are the cheese and the sauce. You can't get good sauce at your grocery store. I don't care if it says pizza sauce on the label. It's no good. 
you need to get this stuff or you need to get a product made by a company called Bonta. There's a, a product called, uh, well, that's what it's called. It's called Bonta. The company's called Escalon. And there's a company in New Jersey that, that uh, makes a pizza sauce too. Probably good because New Jersey has great tomatoes. Anyway, if you use Hunt's or Contadina or whatever, you, you know, Cento, it's not going to be very good unless you have some extraordinary talent that I have never been able to match personally. So this stuff is wonderful. What it really is is six pounds, well, almost seven pounds of tomato paste. They call it sauce, but it's tomato paste with a little citric acid and basil. So uh, anyhow, I happen to have this on my paranoia shelf in the house because I'm kind of semi-prepping now. I, I want to have enough food around to get me through a couple of months in case things go totally insane and the rapture doesn't come and I'm just stuck here with all my bullets, you know, in case you're getting any ideas about stealing my uh, pizza sauce. So I have my, my paranoia shelf in the laundry room now, and this was on it along with five other cans. Um, so uh, the plan, well, where's my thing? My nozzle. Oh, here it is. No, that's not it. Oh, here it is. So the plan is to change the, this thing, because it's pretty messy, and then go like that, see? And I've got it. This is a sacrificial piece. I bought this piece by accident because I didn't know what I was doing. It's the wrong size, but it is the right thickness, so I'm using it to hold up the pizza can. So when I go all the way around here, uh, hopefully this thing will stay where it is. The can will. If not, I'll be highly disturbed. So uh, I'm not going to film myself trying to cut this because that's, that's more grief than I need, but I, it's a hilarious idea. It's just more proof that you don't need great tools to do great things if you're determined and crazy. Well, this worked really well. I don't know if you can see what happened, but I made a fairly nice cut here and a fairly nice cut there. What I did was I, I cut this one with the can over here for, for uh, reasons of geometry. And then I flipped this plate over and put the can back over here and cut the other hole. And it's not perfect, but once I get done grinding on it, you know, no one will know that it wasn't perfect. And uh, don't tell anyone. So this was the hardest part of the whole, this is the most intimidating part of this whole job. The plasma cutter drives me crazy, and I didn't do too bad this time, so congratulations to me. Well, here I am a short time later. I got both of these things cut out. I ground them with a flap wheel to make them nice and smooth. I tested them up against the side of a tank, and they will hold a tank. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it. My plan is to, I left this big area here so I could drill like, you know, a couple of holes in here for TIG tubes. Hope that'll work out. I did okay with the grinder and the plasma cutter, and I do okay with the welder. But uh, the whole saw is always a challenge. I, I may get frustrated and stick it on the milling machine. The more work I do on this thing, the more I realize I needed it because look at the junk on the welding table. All that stuff's going to go in the cabinet. Well, not this. This hangs on the table. Uh, this is going to be the bottom of it. The people who sell me metal are very nice people, but if you don't pay attention to them, they will sell you some pretty ugly stuff, not because they're trying to cheat you, but because they think you don't care. So this thing's got a, a lot of pits on it. So that'll be the bottom, and this will be the top. If I can get this thing loose. And come on, let go, let go. Let go of the cord. There we go. So can you see that? That's how it's going to work. And the pizza can was not harmed at all, so I feel really good about saving my pizza sauce. That stuff's like $7 a can. Okay, well, I'm going to... Find a way to attach this thing. I want to put it on like some kind of a, a strip of, uh, I think I'm going to use 2 inch by 8th of an inch flat bar, and I'll screw that to the box, and I'll bend it at the sides to uh, weld onto the sides of this thing to hold it up a little bit, give it a little rigidity, and that should really be it. Drill the holes, uh, stick some chains on it, and paint it. That's it. Things are going really nice. I got this thing on here. This is my bracket. Don't be upset with me because it's wobbling. I haven't tightened the, uh, I don't know, whatever you call it, the little brackets under here that attach it to the box. So it came out really well. I, I bought myself a two-inch hole saw. It turned out I didn't have one. I had a two and a quarter. This is going to be for my TIG tubes. And uh, made, a, made a mistake. Measured this thing out very carefully and put the holes in exactly the right places. Used a punch in the whole business and still managed to drill a hole like a quarter of an inch off to that side. And I got so mad, even though it didn't matter, I got so mad I welded the plug back in here and, uh, and cut it out again and buffed it down or uh, sanded it down, ground it down with a flap wheel, and once it's painted, you'll never know. So this thing, you know, it's basically done. All i got to do is put a couple of eyes on it, a couple of chains, and uh, down on the bottom of the thing, the bottom platform, I'm going to put some kind of, uh, you know, like a 
metal strip or something to confine the TIG tubes so they don't go sliding around at the bottom. So I'll put, it, I'll put something straight down here and something straight down here and something straight down here, and I'll be in business. So then it's just a matter of painting, and this thing is basically done. I might want to put some kind of hook out here to hold a torch, I'm not sure, or a cord. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I might conceivably put something out here you know, to hold a cord on this end. Anyway, basically done, and it should be beautiful. Can't wait. Okay, another interesting uh, day's work done here. Interesting to me. I put this thing in as a bracket to hold my TIG tubes. So they're going to go in through the top. I got a yardstick over there to show you. So this will kind of restrain them, keep them from going anywhere. And I put these in for the other two tubes on the sides. This one's not really where I want it to be, but it's on, this side's on, this part's only tacked, so I can knock that loose and, and move it pretty easily. It's pretty close. I don't know why the, the nicest welds are always in places where nobody can see them. If you weld something out front where it's going to be obvious, then you always screw it up. So I had a really pretty weld over here, and this is a pretty weld, and these over here, you know, not as nice. Bummer. Okay, so uh, what's left to do? I was going to cut some chain links in half and then put half a link here and half a link here and so forth, and then use snap clips and a chain. But I think that's stupid now. There's no reason why I can't just drill holes, like four holes, and uh, I can use a false link to, put a, to attach a chain here and to attach a chain there, and I can put a snap link at the end of the chain, so the snap link will connect to the holes on these sides. And that's pretty much it, except for, you know, things to hold cords, cables. It's working. I love it. Unbelievably, this job is finished. I would not say it's totally finished, because I don't have any hangers for, uh, you know, the objects that are dangling off with the cords. Um, sorry, I had to go get a pointer. Anyway, you can see the cords. I don't really have any place to put them yet. They don't do too bad on, on top of these bottles. You may be wondering why I've got an oxygen bottle on my cart, and it's because I don't have a big C25 bottle. So I'm going to have to exchange. I didn't make any provision here for a short bottle because I thought, why would I use a short bottle? I thought if I had a short bottle, it would just be for times when my other one is being swapped out or something. Or I don't know. You don't want to. It's it's Sunday and you don't have your a new bottle and you just want to do something. So you stick a little bottle in there. So I'm, I'm thinking that's what I'll do. I'll just keep the little bottle and use it for emergencies. Or maybe I'll trade it in. Maybe they'll let me. They'll give me an allowance on it when I trade it in. When I get the big bottle. Anyway, that's why I have oxygen on here. So I've got my multi-process Harbor Freight welder, and I've got my AHP, uh, AHP Alpha Tig 200X, and things are going pretty well. I mean, I'll see if I can take you around. You know, you can kind of see how things look. Not much going on on the back. Anyway, uh, I've, I've had a couple of ideas about what to do about hanging things. Of course, one is just to leave them where they are. And another is, I, I had a, this idea that I would put little brackets on the sides here. But then I thought, well, if you have rigid brackets out here, what's going to happen if you run into something? They're going to get bent, they're going to fall off, they're going to knock the cart over. What if you just put chains here, like you bolt or weld, weld the uh, one end of a chain to this thing, and then you put a snap clip on the other one, and then you can take it around under your cord and, and you know, attach it, uh, to the, uh, attach it back to itself. If you do that, then you'll have something soft that's not sticking out and driving you crazy, and it won't gouge up your cords and cables, and it sounds like a great idea to me, so maybe a little chain or even just a nylon strap would be good. The other thing I'm thinking about is they make these things that go on the top of your bottles that have little prongs that stick off to hold helmets and things like that. <clears throat> I'd have to find out what those cost. So uh, we'll see how that works out. The bottom of this thing, I didn't make it any wider than it already was. I mean, I already made it much longer. I made the, the turning circle much longer by putting the wheels way out here. And I, I just thought it would make it worse to make it wider. I don't think it really needs to be made wider unless you, you know, unless you're really clumsy or you like to drive around in your, your shop. It's, it's going to be pretty tough to knock this thing over. I mean, if you have a really terrible shop floor or, or if you're, you know, if there's a big incline or something, maybe, maybe you'll want to extend the, extend some bars on the bottom and move your casters out a little ways. I don't see any reason to do it. 
it's already starting to fill up. I was getting this thing together yesterday, and there was junk here and there. And I would say, what am I going to do with this junk? It's in my way. So I just started throwing it in here, and that's exactly what it's for. So it does hold junk. It's not organized. It's just out of my way. But at least it's out of my way, and I will organize it eventually. I plan to make another one of these things, a red one, and uh, put my Lincoln on it and my Hypertherm plasma cutter. And I should be ready to go. I'm not totally thrilled with these holes that I drilled. These are, these are two-inch holes. And I thought that that would be more than large enough for any kind of tube holder. And as soon as I did this, of course, I looked it up, and I, I found that a lot of tube holders are slightly over two inches wide. So I don't know. I mean, I like these little tube holders that come from the factory. I don't need a 1,000 rods. But maybe I should fix that. Maybe I should open these holes up slightly. I don't know how I would do that. I know how to make a hole. I don't know how to enlarge it. But anyway, maybe it could be, it could be that these will work now because when you use a hole saw... <clears throat> that says two inches on it. Obviously, it's going to cut a little larger than two inches because that's how saws work. So uh, maybe there is no problem, but I may need, I may want to open those up later. So I don't think there's going to be any need to put anything back here, and this should be a tremendous <clears throat> a tremendous blessing to the shop. <clears throat> Please excuse me. Here are the carts that I am replacing, and this is my Vulcan cart. These things are fantastic. They only hold one bottle. They got storage for TIG tubes. There's all sorts of doodads here for uh, tours and cables. And this thing, well, you can't you can't just yank it out of here. But well, I guess you can, can't you? I don't know, isn't it loose? Well, anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is, you can put this on either side. So you've got two on that side and four on this side. You can just easily flip it. It's got a little box down here that holds almost nothing. A little plastic box. Or if you want little consumables in it, it's it's sturdy. It's well constructed. I mean, 80 bucks with a coupon, and you can put 350 pounds on it. I think this thing is unbeatable. It's just not as good as what I've got. And this other one over here, uh, this is this I think holds 350 pounds. This is from Eastwood, and I got it for 50 bucks, which I mentioned earlier. I think this is all the storage it has. This is okay, except the problem with this is you need to have it on the other side of the card from these because they interfere with each other. And I, I never did fix that. But anyway, this is all the storage. You get this and these, and you get a couple of hooks on it. And it's great. holds big bottles. But it's really big. It's bulky. It's lar it takes up a much bigger footprint than it needs to. It takes up almost exactly the same footprint of what, I'm, what I put together. And it won't hold nearly as much junk. So uh, I, I love this thing for 50 bucks, And I, I, think it's, I think it's a great cart. But uh, now that you can get this Vulcan cart, I would never buy one of these things again unless I really had to have two machines on it. You can put two machines on this realistically, whereas with a Vulcan cart, you can only put a, a, a lower machine on it if it's like eight inches high, which isn't going to happen. So this goes on Craigslist. This goes on Craigslist. The other one goes back in the workshop, and uh, life is going to be really sweet. Now I have to go in and try to put this video together. That will be interesting. So, so long from the Bubba Continuum. Go Trump. <laughs>